A few thoughts now on petty political correctness and the importance of speaking plainly, especially when leading this nation. The Democratic presidential candidates appeared to be trying to talk tough on terror during their second debate held this weekend, but they failed and failed miserably. They couldn't even muster the strength or the judgment to name our enemy in the so-called war on terror. They refused to say the two words, radical Islamists. Here's how they responded when asked whether they agree with Senator Marco Rubio's characterization that we are at war with radical Islam. I don't think we're at war with Islam. I don't think we're at war with all Muslims. I think we're at war with jihadists. I think that you can, you can talk about Islamists who um, clearly are also jihadists. I don't think the term is what's important. What is important to understand <laughs> is we have organizations, whether it is ISIS or Al-Qaeda, who do believe we should go back several thousand years we should make women third-class citizens, that we should allow children to be sexually assaulted, that they are a danger to modern society. I believe calling it what it is, it's to say radical jihadis. That's to call what it is. Well, no, that's not what it is. It is not who they are. They are radical Islamists. The Democrats seem to be so concerned with political correctness that they are completely incapable of naming our enemy. Instead, they cower, they run scared from the reality that exploded in death and blood in Paris Friday. Of course, they're in perfect company with the Obama administration, which has also refused to call these terrorists radical Islamist terrorists. But the president inherited his aversion in part to truth and plain language about these terrorists, embracing political correctness to suffocate truth in our political arena. Luckily, we have emerging leaders who are breathing life back into our political debates and our discussions, and who may well do the nation the great service of killing off political correctness and its mind-bending distortion of the reality that we must overcome. Imagine this, if you will. As far back as 2002, almost 13 years ago, I settled on the term radical Islamist to describe our enemy. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, I was shocked and disappointed that the then Bush White House refused to define and name the enemy. And so I criticized the White House, and to determine the most descriptive and accurate term for our enemies, I put on the air lots of discussion with Arab and Muslim historians, foreign policy and Middle Eastern experts, including Professor Fawad Jurgis and Princeton's Bernard Lewis. I criticized the Bush administration's refusals to just to simply say the words, radical Islamists, instead using the serviceable so-called war on terror. It might as well have been called a war against truth. I said then, and I was roundly criticized for saying, that if you haven't got the guts to name your enemy, you sure as hell can't defeat your enemy. But I couldn't have imagined then that we would, more than 13 years later, be in this country debating labels for our enemies instead of killing the enemies of this great nation, who are without doubt our reservation properly called radical Islamists. How cowardly and how truly ignorant must anyone be to refuse to call them what they are? Our quotation of the evening, this one from author John Lacare, who wrote, there is a big difference between fighting the Cold War and fighting radical Islam. The rules have changed, and we haven't. We're coming right back with much more.